broadcasting live on the UnitedWest.org and AM Radio Network and simulcasting on DirecTV, iHeartRadio, Roku, and the World Wide Web, this is Enemies of the State with Tom Trento. I was, uh... Thunder jetting over the weekend. I was at a friend's house uh, doing some uh, some preparation for a debate that I'll be in in the near future. We'll tell you about that maybe tomorrow. And um, I hear friend had a bunch of little kids running around. I hear thunder jet, thunder jet. I said, wait a minute. That's our um, open. I'm looking at this cartoon. I'm going thunder shot. Yeah, no, no. I think that's the same music. And I went to one of our YouTube uh, videos, one of our shows, youtube.com, theunitedwest.org, and I did the open, and all the little kids are going, that's the same thing, that's the same thing. <laughs> I said, yeah, man, you know, we're pretty cool. Yeah, we got cool. this stuff. We're hip. So um, the, uh, the adult in the house said, can you do that? Can you just take their music? I said, we, we have our vase. We, we have, have our, our ways. Our legal vase. Tom Trento here, enemies of the state. That's just not a phrase. That is who we look for. They are out there, ladies and gentlemen, enemies of the state. Isn't it interesting how the world has changed in the last six, eight months, a year, where we were the whack job, extremist, conspiratorial people talking about Islamic Jihad. And today, I tweeted over the weekend, today, Islam is insane. I think we can classify the system of Islam as being inherently insane. No one in their right mind can look at the system of Islam as articulated anywhere in the country and conclude this is a religion of peace, this is something for all people, all pla when Muslims themselves cannot get along 1400 years, but let's say a lot of that was just sort of Neanderthal confusion. In today's advanced day and age, when educated people are slicing each other's throats in various war venues from Yemen to, uh, to the Sudan to the whole Middle East to wherever, wherever, how can anybody be interested in a religion that, uh, that, uh, that encapsulates all of this complete insanity? It is crazy. Well, we've been saying this for a long time, that the religious component of Islam is sort of a veneer. It's a thoroughgoing political system, in fact, a military system, in fact, a supremacist totalitarian system committed to world domination and control, and you're watching that play out right before your very eyes. Enemies of the state. But the enemies we talk about aren't just over there. They're right here in the United States of America. And as you'll see today, in a uh, small letter E, but possibly large letter E, we have enemies in the United States Congress who are Republicans. This whole deal that uh, Bob Corker put together regarding a check on the Iranian uh, framework agreement is a nonsensical circumvention of the United States Constitution. We're going to get into that today. Also on the agenda today, um, a little bit of uh, federal work, the JTTF, Joint Terrorism Task Force, up in Minnesota. What a strange place to be operating where the Somalis live and breathe. They got busted up there and down in San Diego. We've been in San Diego quite a bit. We know jihadis are down there. They got busted over the weekend. We'll talk about that. Damon put together an amazing slideshow all this week, five parts. We're going to bring you behind the scenes into our phenomenal Israel trip. But we're going to make application of our trip to national security issues so that you can be mobilized um, 567 days from today, November 8, 2016. We're going to have a real comical part where um, Prime Minister, Foreign Minister Zarif from Iran has in the New York Times today, this is all on our show today, has in the New York Times today, a piece where he, he pronounces himself simply as the peacemaker of the world and, 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 and dictatorial in his diplomatic way, asks all 
uh, civilized nations to come under the Iranian umbrella to bring peace throughout the whole world. That's our comic section coming up in a little bit. <laughs> that is ridiculous. That is a funny, funny section. Well, I thought the other comic section was Hamas cracks down on Islamists. We got that coming <laughs> out. We have Hamas cracking down, not on Islamists. They're cracking down on the Islamic State in Gaza. <laughs> this is very, very, very interesting. At least Islamists. This is comical. Are we going to... Are we going to call Iran in to deal with the Islamic State in Mexico on the on the U.S. Mexican border? You think at least Islam is not insane, you know? At least that's not the case. And if we have more time, insane is the way this administration deals with it. And if we have time, we're going to uh, uh, take a look at um, President Obama is the worst president ever. Yes, we always have time for that. Another one of his um, crony. People running the DEA is uh, completely weeded and whacked out with, with her management. Look, when you have an ideologue who is uh, indebted to women, he's a very weak man, he's indebted to strong women, needs strong women, and you get strong women in some of these places who have a leftist viewpoint, then you get what we're getting with Obama and the women he picks for these various positions, from Lois Leonard. To, to this person, to the... Uh, Lionheart, Leonhart. Yeah, yeah the, the lady up at... Um, DEA. Uh, well, the DEA, and also the prospective... Um, oh, uh, yeah, the Attorney General girl. Attorney General, yeah. yeah. Uh, just crazy stuff. What we need is a woman president. That's what we need. <laughs> uh, Fiorina, what's her name? Uh, no, no. Carly no. Fiorina. No, Carly Fiorina. Carla, you know, she's not allowed to do that. She could be good, man. She could be good. I, uh, I could get back... Get behind Carly Fiorina. Um, well, she was she was uh, beating beating Hillary up over the weekend. She just nailed her. My her favorite up. statement from her is flying around the world over a million miles is a uh, is a is an activity, not an accomplishment. Not an yeah, exactly. One of our very very close friends of the United West um, recently met with her privately and put her through the ringer on all issues that uh, that conservative. Um, Zionists are concerned about national security people and it was reported back to me that she passed with flying colors. How'd she do in the Grover thing? Um, I don't know if the Grover thing came up in that particular meeting but in terms of where her worldview is, where her thinking is, Carly Fiorina, former um, CEO of HP, Hewlett Packard, going to run for president, uh, I think she'd be definitely with us on two reasons. She's right on on Israel. She's right on on Islamic Jihad, and she's right on on, on true conservatism. So could well, be good. My my, I'm still out. I I don't know enough about her to, because she didn't run HP that well. I mean, she didn't really turn a big profit for them and everything. But maybe she's good government wise. I don't know. I like. Um, I personally like Michael Huckabee too. Um, he, what? Again, no, I don't like. You like Mike Huckabee? Oh, he's he's the best guy out no, there. No, he if, is. If not. you ta if you take if <laughs> no. you take are you you're on drugs, Tom? If you take our issues, no. If you take that, and you go, okay, what guy understands it the best? Judicial uh, supremacy. I got it. Nobody's give nobody's close to Mike Huckabee on judicial mm. supremacy. And, and we have Ted Cruz, who's a constitutional attorney, fails like, on judicial supremacy. Fails miserably. He, Where is Louis well, Gomer oh, when you need him? I know, I know, I know. But hold on. But Cruz is, you know, really excellent on the 10th Amendment. You know, he, he actually got his so PhD. Is, so is Huckabee. No, he... Cruz got his Ph.D. on the Tenth, tenth Amendment by arguing that point. He but, knows it inside and but out. But if you if you if you ha get your Ph.D. this is a little aside. If you get your Ph.D. on the Constitution, let that. But you let judges be supremists. You failed miserably. You, we've got to hold the judges accountable. They are not supreme in the sense that they never make a mistake. The cons the the U.S. Congress can mitigate quite a bit of their work. You're going to get a bunch of you're going to get a bunch of attack hate mail on the whole Huckabee thing. I'm well, um, it's, it's just not uh, He's the I, best one out there on Israel, uh, best one out there in Jihad, no, best one out there. He's on, not a conservative. He's no way a conservative. He's no, he's come a long way. You have to oh, you have to look on, at his recent writings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he, that's 100 the, pounds ago there, but um, uh, he's uh, he's, he's no made Chris amends. Christie. He's made there amends. Is, the, um, no, yeah, right. We got a lot. We have a long way to go, and hopefully, hopefully, if everyone else slips, 
Mitt Romney will come back in. <laughs> no, no, no. We already have Jeb Bush if we need that. That's true. I miss a nice <laughs> guy. I've met him several times, uh, but he's not uh, the guy for this time around. Is Hillary getting that crap kicked out of her or what? Just well, the new book that came out? No. Oh, the one with all the foreign money? Yeah, it just got released. Well, that's I thought a that was... top of Drudge Report. No, I miss... I, that's what the... Um... Uh, what's his face was talking about over the weekend uh, uh paul Rand paul was talking about he says a two week in two weeks all this stuff's going to come out about it we already knew this well, it's like ago. this it's like this it's like um um mrs uh, clinton uh would you like to speak at our event we'll give you three hundred thousand dollars you know um what how much four hundred thousand dollars <laughs> what do you come on Okay, we'll give you $500,000. Just simply uh, sign, sign your name over here to this little thing that'll help us, uh, help us um, get something. Uh, oh, you, you don't even have to worry about it. Just sign your name over here. <laughs> I mean, quid pro quo like you can't believe. In, uh, in a year, she made $13 million giving 54 speeches. Do the math on that, right? Jeez, oh All, most of them with foreign countries with quid pro quo documentation. While she's Secretary of State? While she was Secretary of State. Oh, my God. Uh, if this doesn't do her in, I don't know what's going to, you know. The, the, uh, what? The, the my question. Well, she'll probably be hiding in the Scooby van for the rest of the month. That's for I sure. I think she blew that van off. My question is, why is the Republican Party not going after her record as the Secretary of State combined with the missing emails? Okay, combined with the missing emails, I don't understand what the Republican Party is doing right now. Well, here's what they've had doing. every to jump all over this, and they, it's just like Mitt Romney not talking about Benghazi during the twelve elections. It's a very good question. Here's the answer: five hundred and sixty-seven days. Uh, right now, uh, all the campaigns that are serious campaigns, and when I was running campaigns, uh, we did this. You have a gigantic master book like this, and you have. A page for every single day, 567 days. And you have your life plotted before you. And every other page is, we've got to raise $2 million today. You know, whatever the numbers are. Um, and there is so much focus on everybody running their campaign and getting their money that a battle for the issues, everybody knows, all the Republicans know, nobody's listening. They won't listen until Labor Day 2016. First in September. That's when the fight starts. And right around a year from now, right around the spring of 2016, some of the material issues will start being discussed, like you're talking about, Damon. But what is going on right now, each campaign is doing tremendous opposition research because they want something better than what's already out there. So uh, analogously, if this were going to be uh, a big battle fought on November 8th, 2016, Right now, everybody's in training to figure out the exact plan uh, a year from now when they launch that's, it. That's hey, a totally hey, poor Tom. strategy. They mm. ought to trash her before she builds an insurmountable lead. They Tom. ought to, because by then they're going to say, oh, Who's this they? is two Who's years they? old. Everybody's concerned about their own little But kingdom. you know what? It, it takes a little bit more than the short-term thinking of just raising money. <laughs> she needs to be outed as the failure that she is. Listen, everyone saw. Who should do that? Hey. Okay, we agree. Who should do that? Uh, Everyone that's seriously contemplating running in the Republican Party, they don't need to just be running against the other Republicans right now. Part of their budget well, should are. be going I mean, they're, towards they're destroying taking, Hillary they're Clinton. Taking swipes hey at her. The they're RNC taking should be doing that. Hey, hey, well, hey, hey, hey. The RNC has to raise all this money for their candidates. Hey. Yes. I got five bucks that says Hillary's not even a Democrat nominee next next year this time. You know... I'm not she, a uh, betting man, and um, those kinds of amounts, $5, are <laughs> up there, and I, I can't do that. I cannot risk $5 on that. Hey, you um, owe me 5 for Mark showing up last Friday, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, well, anyway, it's the 20th of April, 20 minutes after the hour, Tom Trento here. WSRB, Sunny. Uh, SBR. Gee. <laughs> It's only been a how a year. No, right? not quite. Uh, WSBR. <laughs> I'm looking at this other one here, WHFS. Um, how about we're on the radio? Just we're find radio. us, okay? Right 740 and 740 here in South Florida, 1010 in Tampa Bay. WSBR, Sunny Boca Raton. 
and WHFS. I, yeah, I got and that hello to our terrorist friends, Hassan Shibley and Ahmed Badir up there in you terrorist can, Tampa Bay. You, you are very accurate in calling them terrorists, as indeed they are, as we have established. <laughs> um, it is an uh, interesting day today, first day of... Uh, uh, our five-part series, where we're, we're going to show you a little bit about our uh, trip to Israel, go through some of that information, but make application on a national security basis so that they're not just vacation pictures like a fun vacation. It was, uh, it was a tremendous amount of fun, tremendous amount of uh, investigation, uh, information, and uh, knowledge geared toward activism. And guess what else we did? Oh, I can't believe this. What? I haven't even fully unpacked yet. Guess what we did? What we did? We picked another date when we're going again. Yes. When on Friday. It? We picked the date when Ronnie Wexler is here after the show. When, it, no, when is no, the next? Wait. No, 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 no. We, we need to talk about this. When is the next it? national season? Before, okay. No, we need to talk it's, about this. Mark, no, it's no. talked about. You weren't here. It's done. No, it's not done. It's Don't done. talk about it. It's no, it's done. not. It's not done. March fourteenth, March fourteenth to March twenty fourth of next year, guaranteed. March fourteenth yep. to March twenty fourth of it. next year. It's already booked, and uh, Mark's <laughs> Mark. It's eleven months I wanted away. To go. What you... I wanted to go in November, but Ronnie said that it's too fit, too soon. But we'll see. Okay, go ahead, Mark. Nothing. Go ahead. <laughs> Mark's speechless. Got yep. a low, got a refire, man. We got the enemies at the uh, okay. coming over the wire. It's eleven months away. All right. Um, go ahead. So go. Right, right now we are are planning a a, a follow up trip, not a follow up trip. You know the the next mission, and we have a lot of people interested in going. So um, stay tuned. We have more information about that as we draw it all up. It'll be about a year from now, Doesn't and um, we're we'll be going before then. That's for sure. Uh, we've got a lot to do over there. Uh, we're working on a documentary that we hope to get done by the summertime and go premiere it in Israel in the summertime. So we got a lot, of, a lot of crazy stuff going on. But for right now, it's time to take a, look, a quick look at um, uh, the Minnesota situation. What happened in Minnesota? Uh, let me go to the other place to take a look at this. The Great Wall of the West. And do I need my glasses? Yeah. I, I, uh, here we go. The Great Wall of the West. Here we are. Looking at the Great Wall of the West. Uh, the first item I have up on our little list here is um, Minnesota situation. We can throw that up. Uh, I'm trying, trying, trying. Enemies of the state. There, there we go. Federal authorities arrest six in... Minneapolis uh, in Minnesota, California is part of a counterterrorism probe. All right, this says a couple of things, very important in terms of uh, the overview for, for what we're doing here um, in, uh, in America and in, in Israel. There's a bust going on right now in, uh, that occurred in, uh, in Minnesota and in San Diego. How many people... Can you see in that article, Damon? I think it was five and one or four. I can read the article. Six Minnesota men have been charged with terrorism in a criminal complaint unsealed Monday that accused them of attempting to travel to Syria to join the Islamic State. Hey, it's nice that even some of the news agencies are referring to them as Islamic State instead of ISIS or no, ISIL. It's definitely coming around. Now, can uh, you... The six are accused of conspiracy to provide material support and attempting to provide material support to a foreign terrorist organization. The complaint said the men planned to reach Syria by flying from San Diego or New York City to nearby countries and lied to federal investigators when they were stopped. Do you have any uh, pictures from Kunitra? where we were on the border of Syria and you could hear the bombs going off, where the UN car was. Um, the U I the could probably find them if we change up this. Um, Just a minute. If you, put uh, this. If you, if you can go to that, uh, we'll show you where we were, uh, very close to, uh, to Damascus, I think 30 kilometers away. And um, we're going to give you a sense of what's going on. We'll pull a map up also of the Middle East to give you a sense of what these guys are trying to do in Minnesota, and who is the, the, the dominant, uh, what dominant country is sending immigrants like crazy to Minnesota? Somalia. Somalia. Yeah, uh, it's a dumping ground for Somalian jihadists. And, and here's how these things started out. Uh, the Catholic Church and 
Protestant churches in an effort to do good and help immigrants leaving their country for uh, political reasons, didn't have, do not have a sufficient filter to determine good guy, bad guy, bring them all in, love them and help them. That was when the world was a safe and sane place, more safe and more sane than it is today. Recognizing that, uh, that uh, uh, we've got to dump these people somewhere, the State Department then picked up and said, you know what, let's send somebody from Africa to where it snows every day of the year and uh, let them have some cross-cultural involvement. Well, they start sending Somalis to ice-cold areas, and the Somalis stayed very, very tribal. They don't integrate, they don't assimilate. They simply stay tribal. And then as the jihadist um, developments kept occurring around the country, around the world, uh, we have serious, serious jihad problems in Minnesota, in particular Minneapolis. Why do you think Michelle Bachman, who's from that state, was so in tune with Islamic jihad? She was in the middle of the stuff in her state. And uh, she was ridiculed. Now she's viewed as the prophetess. So let's take a look at, uh, if we can, where we were on our trip in Israel a couple of weeks ago. It's only been about two weeks. You realize that? That's in the crazy. Kunitra, three weeks? The Kunitra area of Israel on the border of uh, Syria, just you know, a couple hundred yards away, basically. Ah, well, four. Four. Okay. There we go. What is that? That is we... a bomb shelter on the Syrian border. I believe we are looking into Syria. Is that what that is? Yeah, yes. that's literally that's a bomb is. shelter. <laughs> looking oh. into Syria. We're in Israel. Uh, yes, yes, yes. That's at Kunitra. That's at the... All right, what this is, is... Um, I'm, you know, I'm looking at it. It looks like an old the Ironside sub in, uh, in the Civil War or something. That's, that's a, uh, a defensive position um, in a place called Kunitra, which is a, 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 not an abandoned, but a base, a military base at a high point in Israel that the Israelis have essentially turned into a tourist place for tourists to go and, uh, and look at. And they left some of the armament and elements in place. So look at the position, the fighting position, looking down in the, in the far ground, in the background there, is, uh, is Syria, and out on the horizon is Damascus, where these people are trying to get to, these people, the terrorists that were in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and in San Diego. They usually fly to some benign country, whatever, European country, then go to Turkey from that benign European country. Once you're in Turkey, it's a hop, skip, and a jump into the Islamic State's controlled area, whether in Iraq or in, uh, in Syria. Next picture on our uh, mission to Israel that's in the same basic area. There you, there you go to give an idea of how close you are to everything. Yeah, around. read that. What's it say? Uh, in one direction, it's saying 240 kilometers to Jerusalem, 50 kilometers to Tiberias, uh, 243 kilometers to the prime minister's office. Then the other direction, 60 kilometers to Damascus. 60 kilometers. So, so 60 miles. miles is about 40 miles, right? Yep, yep. 36. You use six you know, as 36 a miles to Damascus, and you're only 30 miles from Tiberias. And only 800 kilometers or you know, 480, 500 miles from Baghdad. We take you right into the action, ladies and gentlemen. And one of the other elements, uh, so we... we um, Keep your eye on the JTTF, Joint Terrorism Task Force. For those of you that are not familiar with part of the uh, counterterrorism infrastructure in the United States, we have about 25 different agencies, all with some responsibility for counterterrorism work from the U.S. Coast Guard to state police to even local police. So to make sense out of all of this, um, a Joint Terrorism Task Force, JTTF, has been established regionally. So let's say uh, a place like this, there'll be um, in a certain region based upon population and geography, there'll be a joint terrorism task force that'll have uh, a half a dozen people from local municipalities. Let's say we're in Miami. You'll have uh, the Miami PD, you'll have the Florida State Police, I'll have um, the first responders there, you have Homeland Security, then federal people come in. 
from the U.S. Army, it could be from the CIA, it could be, you know, whatever agencies make the most sense. That becomes the JTTF, Joint Terrorism Task Force. Those physical people sit down every day at one location and they go, okay, what the heck's going on today? And uh, supposedly after 9-11, we developed fusion centers in each state. A fusion center, there's seven of them here in, in Florida, a fusion center takes real-time data developing anywhere. A guy just stopped uh, a couple of Muslim guys in a car in Tallahassee, Florida, and they had bad ID, and they had a fake passport. Oh, did I say Muslims? Oh, my <laughs> word. Are You're racially profiling? profiling, Tom. <laughs> racially profiling. Now I know why the U.S. CMO <laughs> was up on D.C. a week ago today. <laughs> Racist people killing <laughs> Muslims like you. <laughs> The, um, that real-time information goes into a supercomputer <laughs> controlled by none other, if you can... If than you the guys Jews. Can, no, but controlled by the Jews. <laughs> no, controlled by... People don't know this. We know this. If you can cut to a shot of you guys in the background, we'll let them see who controls that computer. Uh-oh. We do. Watch. Go in the Us? background. <laughs> Top left part of the screen. Can they see that? Oh, the brain? The brain <laughs> controls that. See the brain back there? He He's controls right, the computer. Right there. Up there. Yeah, right there, there you right go. There, right there, right there. Uh, and, and that computer sends that data out to analysts at the each JTTF point. They look at it. They write up reports hourly, give it, put it in the hands of the agents, and um, is the brain coming into play? <laughs> uh, we bow before the brain who knows all things. <laughs> We bow before you, brain. Uh, that information is put in the hands of the agents, and they go, wait a minute. I ran into those two, I don't know what religion they were, but those two guys with, with beards and no mustaches and things on their heads and all of that. Two weeks ago in, uh, in Miami, you know, and they were at this mosque. Now there's a lead. The JTTF works that lead, goes to the mosques, takes their shoes off, they enter, they don't smell like garlic. They go in there, and um, now an investigation starts, and then you capture six people up in, uh, in Minnesota. That's how this stuff is supposed to work. Interject the Department of Justice with Eric Holder, and he goes, wait a minute, wait a minute, you know, and then throws roadblocks before everything else. But uh, that's only, the way it's supposed to work. Now, let's bowing, go down to Gaza, to the Gaza border. I was going to say, only bowing to the uh, demands of the... Uh, USC Don't go to Gaza. The likes thereof. Don't go to Gaza. Stay right here. I want to do uh, Iran right now. All right. How far is Iran? Oh, the brain. <laughs> There's the brain. He knows and controls all things. Uh, if we go to Iran at uh, 33 minutes after the hour, Tom Trento here, your host, Enemies of the State, WSBR Radio in Boca Raton, 740 AM on your dial, theunitedwest.org, commercial free. Do you see any commercials on this show? No. Does that mean we have so much money we don't need oh, to we're, go to we're just rolling in No, it here. just means that uh, we don't uh, want to see anyone that likes us enough to spend their money with us have their establishment firebombed. Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we like our friends. Um, but you can write checks to us. Please go to our website, theunitedwest.org. And in the top right-hand side, it says donate securely. Very, very, very important. We, we do need that. We're bad fundraisers, raisers, good fighters. Please... Don't hold it against us. Write us large checks. Dad Trento, he's one big Zionist, but he's no Jew when he's it no comes Jew, to the I monies. Know. I may be tonight, though. I may be That's functioning. Right, you may. All right, let's go to, um, to Iran, the peacemaker. This is Now we're turning to the comical section of the show <laughs> where, um, this where is funny. Iran is becoming the, uh, inserting themselves, Iranian leaders, as global peacemakers. Take a look at this New York Times article. Uh, Mohammad Javid Zarif. He's, been, he's that uh, slick guy that's always shaking hands with Kerry and smiling. And, you know, what is going on between the two of those guys? That's interesting. You know what's going on? Just what we did last week. An influence operation by Zarif upon the United States has worked flawlessly to the degree that the New York Times is publishing a message from Iran. And read the opening statement there, Damon. Uh, gladly. 
Uh, we made important progress in Switzerland earlier this month with the five permanent mem members of the United Nations Security Council plus Germany. We agreed on parameters to remove any doubt about the exclusively peaceful nature of Iran's nuclear program and to lift international sanctions against Iran. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now if you're a breathing human being with a pulse, you know that's a lie. Re read the next paragraph. Watch this. But to seal the anticipated <laughs> nuclear deal, more political will is required. The Iranian people have shown their resolve by choosing to engage with dignity. It is time for the United States and its Western allies to make the choice between cooperation and confrontation, between negotiations and grandstanding, and between agreement and coercion. All right, let's deconstruct this for our friends and our <laughs> listeners on WSBR Radio 740, WHFS 1010 in Tampa. Um, what strikes either of you, Mark, Damon, or anybody else in the control booth, what strikes you? about that second paragraph from uh, Foreign Minister Z uh, Zarif, Zarif, C-A-R-I-F-F. Um, it's a false, it's a straw man argument, really. It's, it's just absolutely insert. He's making themselves out to be the rational one and the, and the rest of the world as the, uh, as the people that are stalling and capitulating, or uh, not capitulating, they want the rest of the world to capitulate. He's trying to make themselves off as the peacemakers. It's, it's phenomenal as propaganda. As the rational ones. Yeah, as, it's phenomenal propaganda. He says, we have, we have come to the table with dignity, which is critically important to Muslims, to be, to, to be viewed as dignified and to be viewed respected. Honor and particularly, shame. Particularly for Persians, who have even a higher level than Arabs do regarding that. Anything else you've seen in there, Mark? That, that, there he is right there, Zarif. Any, uh, any other insight for anybody in that paragraph? Yeah, I would have to go with Aria Gozi's statement where he does bull. Beep, bull, beep, bull, beep. <laughs> By it's the way, uh, Gano interviewed a Gozi yesterday. It's up online. we gotta, we got to catch that. Yeah. We'll have those guys back on the show this no, week. We'll be a Gozi met with, with Gano? Yes! Interview. I knew a Gozi was crazy. I didn't yeah, think it was that crazy. Imagine. No, we had lunch together, remember? Yes, there. I do. That's what I am saying. I know, I know. Um, go back to that paragraph, because I want to pull a couple of key words out. If you can make it bigger. You mean make it bigger? All right. Yeah, second paragraph in particular. Now, what we're doing here is deconstructing a propaganda piece written by Foreign Minister Zarif to the New York Times. He says... But to seal the anticipated nuclear deal, to seal it, we're very close, America. Yeah. Put pressure on your people. More political will is required. Your politicians need to step up. The Iranian people have shown their resolve. We are strong. He's playing to his own people. By choosing to engage with dignity, we didn't kowtow. We didn't run away. We walked into Geneva. We walked into Washington. We walked wherever we needed to with dignity. Uh, with dignity. Now it's time for the United States. Of course, that's the first country. And Western allies to make choice. Now he's laying out a, a decision-making process. Now it's time for the United States and their Western allies to make the choice between. And these are called couplets in, in literary, their literary devices. You put two of them together, you string two or three of them together to emphasize the point you're making hit from several angles. Watch what he does. To make a choice between cooperation and confrontation, he even alliterates that. Cooperation and confrontation between negotiations, which is good, and grandstanding, which is bad, between agreement, which is good, and coercion, which is bad. And so he... He lays down the gauntlet telling President Obama of the U.S. Congress, hey, the New York Times has published our piece. We're global peacemakers. The ball is in your court. Why is well, he doing this? He's doing this for a very particular reason. Well, well he's trying to put a, uh, you know, space between Obama and the Congress. He, he's saying, we love this deal. We think this is a great, of fantastic deal. Of course they do. Deal. This, is, this, is, this is a wonderful deal. Don't let the Congress, you know, uh, get, get in your way. All right, absolutely, trying to put a wedge between uh, Obama, who's in his pocket, and the U.S. Congress, which 
uh, is also in his pocket, according to Andy McCarthy. We'll get into that in a, in a minute. But there's another reason why he's laying this out in the New York Times right now um, in, in the way he's doing it. Uh, he is um, he's preempting any criticism right. that's going to be held against Iran right. when, when and if, if and when this thing falls apart. He's going to say, we did everything we, we could. Tried. We tried. We even went into the New York Times and begged and pleaded with America to come and meet us as, uh, as right. peace partners. Just, just to recap the whole deal, no inspections, all the centrifuges you want, no limitations on making nuclear weapons that can be verified, okay? No ins no. No stopping of no the Over the weekend, Mark, that's a good point. Over the weekend... They put out a press release and said, absolutely no inspections at military installations because you're going to send in spies and you're going to compromise our, mm, our nuclear own program. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I tell you what. I, would, I didn't say that. <laughs> I, would, I want to sell a car to Obama. I really do. You know, it's just like, oh my God, how much can I get? I'll, hey, I got, I got this junker and I'll sell to you for $1 million, Obama. Okay. Hey. Uh, what, what was it? Did we have a program like yeah, that? Yeah, cash for clunkers. Yeah. Cash for clunkers. We already had that. You missed well, it. You, you know what? The, it, the line of reasoning with these, you know, giving the two opposite sides, with giving the two opposite sides of, uh, you know, uh, cooperation, confrontation, negotiations, grandstanding, it's very much the line of reasoning that Obama uses when he's publicly speaking, the straw man argument, like it's a choice between two things, like there's not something else. Like there's only two choices. Yep, it's either yep. the worst or the best. Yep, yep. that's, that's, that's and, a good it's point. It's the straw man argument that he's using it, and you know, Obama will probably eat it up because he uses the same thing. Yep. A, a, a good it. way for our very astute viewers and very astute listeners to understand the scam that's going on, you need to go read the United, uh, United, the New York Times um, opinion piece by Foreign Minister uh, Zarif, Z-A-R-I-F-F, -F, Javid Zarif, slick con man, you need to go read it. But one good way of understanding why this, this guy, what he's saying in the deal needs to be thrown out, replace, uh, let's take one of the world's leading despots from history, or, or even currently, who, who's one of the most horrendous, um, horrible world leaders you could ever think of? Hitler. Obama? Adolf Hitler. Obama. <laughs> so take Adolf Hitler and take um, uh, Eichmann, one of his right-hand men. Uh, if, if Eichmann was in there reading this, this document, wrote the article, you'd go, wait a minute. You know, this, is, this is Eichmann. Um, one of the propagators of Nazi geopolitical processes. How, how, he's a bad guy. He's trying to say this stuff. We don't believe him. Because Zarif is not really known by the West, they've been in their own little bubble for a long time, he has the capability to be in a flowering kind of gentle mm -hmm. diplomat. He is as devious and destructive as uh, uh, Eichmann or uh, Pol Pot or Saddam Hussein or, or any of these totalitarian and, and while he's saying these words in the New York Times to his people, he's screaming, death to America, death to Israel. Come on, people. Yeah, they just I mean, had their army day again last week with a common death to America going on in the I middle mean, of this. Did they do it again last week? Yeah. Unbelievable. I mean, death, I mean, they want to nuke Israel, and you want to give them a nuclear weapon? No, Are you are going to nuke them without nukes. Didn't you know that? They're going to eliminate Israel nuclearly. Nuke, <laughs> nuclearly. Nuclearly. <laughs> nuke, <laughs> nukes, <laughs> somehow. Nuclearly. All right, now, here's what's important at 44 minutes after. For, uh, for everyone listening and, and, uh, and watching, and one of the best ways to listen, and we all do it here, on your iPhone, your smartphone, whatever kind of phone you got, download the application. For those in the know, the app. Download the iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio. You do that, get it all inside. You may have to put your name and an email address in there. Then go to um, WSBR 740 AM. WSBR 740 AM, Boca Raton, Florida. You may not even have to put all of that in. It'll pop up. Hit it, and you're on. You're listening. 4 o'clock every day, East Coast time, anywhere in the world, 
Wherever you have a cell phone signal, you can listen to our show. Um, and, and you should, even if you're just walking around like I do. I listen to it. How do you do that when you're doing it? Look he at, loves the sound of yeah, his yeah, own yeah. voice. <laughs> we critique our work so that it's perfect. That's good. What does that say? I can't read it. <laughs> it says, it's a cartoon. It says, of course our nuclear facilities are for peaceful purposes. And oh, like okay. caption for like the radio a, a, like audience. A, yeah, and the uh, that's the caption, and it's a uh, uh, oh, death to, is, yeah. death to Israel. Pinocchio knows, uh, you know, ten that's miles. That's Mahmoud Adimajad, who's it's the same. still it floating. Hasn't around. So they're all the same. All right, now here's what's important at this point. Forty-five minutes after, uh, what we're doing today, we're giving you a little overview of uh, our trip to Israel, but how it relates to national security issues. Showed you a little bit on the border in Syria and how terrorists worldwide are trying to get over there to fight, and that, that's one of the hot spots for Israel. Another hot spot for Israel is the Iranian situation, obviously, and that's Hezbollah. So if we get some Hezbollah photos, we'll show you where Hez is in Lebanon, that the Israelis have another hot spot there, dealing with Iran through the proxy of Hezbollah. At the foundation of this is this nonsensical um, uh, framework agreement. All of you know we were in Washington, D.C., March 2nd and 3rd, leading a rally, live streaming a show featuring um, the visit of Prime Minister Netanyahu. The 17th, he was reelected in an unforeseen landslide election. On the 20th of March, we were there. And we dealt with many leaders in Israel on the Iranian nuke issue. As a result of tremendous investigation, key national security shops like Center for Security Policy are now saying it's time to dump, dump the deal. Yeah, right. Dump the deal. The deal being the framework for a possible agreement needs to be dumped because of all the uh, facts that Mark mentioned a, a little earlier, it does nothing for the protection of Israel or America. But I want to throw another element out now. Can you get Andy uh, McCarthy's uh, article up? Sure. Oh, you want to dump the deal? Or? Yeah, throw dump the deal up. Let's go to the Center for Security Policy. There it is right there. Mark, could you read that first paragraph? Dump this Iran deal. If you thought the magnitude of Team Obama's abject capitulation to Iran on the on the latter's nuclear weapons program could not be ex exceeded, think again. Caught in the lie that the Iranians had agreed to a conditional and phased relaxation of sanctions as a price for limited restrictions on their pursuit of the bomb, the administration has reportedly agreed to an enormous new concession. Iran now, if Iran now agrees that some sanctions would remain in place, the U.S. would immediately repatriate as much as 50 billion in Tehran's frozen assets. That's unbelievable. If you hold a $100 bill, yeah. you'll have 50 billion. Yeah, unbelievable. This is How much? I mean this is this is worse than the Bo Bergdahl deal. I thought the Bo he couldn't go any worse than Bo Bergdahl, but this is beyond Look, imagination. You, you have to be a soft-headed leftist who, one, doesn't think clearly, two, really doesn't care about America, to, to even consider this as being something uh, legitimate and, and valuable for Americans worldwide. This is a terrorist nation behind most of the terror in the world today, and now we're saying, you give us $100, Damon, and uh, we'll give you $50 billion. What do you think they're going to do with the $50 billion? You know, they're I building their know. military like crazy. More centrifuges, right now. more military, certainly nothing to the people. <laughs> more Hezbollah. More Hezbollah, more, more proxy wars. More, more, Hamas. Yemen, more Yemen down. But how does a leftist, I mean, you have a, a liberal wife, yeah. you have leftist friends. How do they, what is their thought process to say, well, okay. You know, they're evil, but there's a fatwa that says they can't have nuclear bombs. And um, at some point, we have to, President Obama regarding Castro and, and that problem said, I don't want to have to deal with a problem that was there before I was born. You know, he actually made that statement. Like his birth is some divining and dividing point between 
right. peaceful geopolitics. Well, well, how about Obama? How, how about I, Obama saying that th they won't get nuclear arms under his watch? Buddy, you're here for a year and a half. You think the world doesn't go on? World national and world security doesn't matter after the next point, year and a half, you point, dope? Yeah. Well, uh, I'll tell you exactly how they think. All you got to do is watch John Stewart. He'll he, I watched him commenting on the Iran deal. Oh, we should give peace a chance. Oh, I, all we want to do is bomb Iran. All we want to do is go to war. All you want to do is this. I I going John, are are you insane? They what they what do they want to do with this? And peace at all costs, peace at any price, peace at it's so Chamberlain like it is it is pathetic. It's totally From a Jew no less. Uh, yeah, John Stewart. Now here's the here's the uh, the coup de gras that is not good news for all Americans. Tom Trento, your host today. We got a couple of the guys in the control booth, uh, Mark and Damon. Enemies of the state. Name of the show. It's 15 minutes after WSBR Radio. 740 left side of your dial. Tune in there if you're tooling around Tampa Bay. WHFS 1010 in Tampa Bay. You can hear us there. TheUnitedWest.org. Check out our website. We have a bunch of stuff there. We did our uh, campaign against Grover Norquist, who has fired himself. And uh, we'll have some breaking news tomorrow. Breaking news tomorrow. I don't even think you guys know this yet. No. Breaking news tomorrow. A live interview with someone that was at a Grover event last Friday the 17th. In, uh, in, the, in the Philadelphia area, Grover was speaking at a big conservative event. And um, if, if all of this is as it was related to me, we'll have a person who was there tomorrow. Um, once Grover walked up to the stage, about a third of the audience got up and walked out of the building really? and protested wow. Grover. Really? That's because awesome. of... I'm sure there's a lot of factors, but guess what email was going around that everybody was looking at? Oh, I don't know. The one? How, how about the seven-minute one, one that we did exposing him as being the, the head of uh, organizing a terror rally, October 23rd, 2000, in front of the White House with Rachman Alamudi. And the rock and this solid smoking gun evidence document that we found. That we found, which was on their letterhead, Organizing the event on their website, locking that into their website, locking people into calling them for bus information and other information. And Grover says, "I know nothing about it." Some I know nothing. Right. Caught, <laughs> caught, caught. Third of the people in the audience walked out. One of the people that walked out contacted us and get him on the show tomorrow. <laughs> That's that amazing. Let's get back to for a moment this uh, uh, Iranian deal. Gaffney and others are saying, dump the deal, throw it away, Congress, forget about it. Let's deal with Iran as we should from a position of strength, not weakness. And, um, and Republicans are now are starting to say, well, wait a minute, Tom. We have, we have the Coker legislation that's coming out where, uh, where Obama is going to be uh, hindered by the Congress as the U.S. Congress now has a say in a review process. We're all hearing that. But if you, take, if you put up Andy McCarthy's article today, today's uh, uh, National Review, and I'll sum it up very, very quickly. Um, McCarthy, who's a dear friend of ours, a co-author of Sharia, The Threat to America, an author, a, a star author in his own right of Willful Blindness and uh, The Grand Jihad, many, many books on this, New York Southern Prosecutor, Southern District, um, in the early 90s, he was involved in World Trade Center bombing number one, was lead, one of the lead prosecutors going after all the Muslim terrorists, including the blind sheikh back then. He wrote, he's a constitutional expert, he wrote that actually what's happened is the, the Senate has scammed Americans into thinking they truly have a, a sufficient and significant say in stopping Obama. And Andy McCarthy argues, and, I, and very effectively, he says the Constitution has been abandoned by Republicans uh, holding Obama um, to being responsible whenever he's negotiating an international treaty, which this is. And in fact, <coughs> the dynamic has been rele uh, reversed so that the burden isn't on President Obama <coughs> 
to find uh, 67 people that will support him. But the burden is on Congress to find 67 senators that will go against the president. Totally different situation. So after this whole long, very detailed uh, analysis of the legislation that Corker and others put together, Andy McCarthy, constitutional expert, concludes... Just the opposite occurred as to what occurred to hold the president accountable. And he sums it up by saying the Constitution would have put the burden on the president to find 67 people to support the agreement that he signs with the Iranians. But because of the finagling, you've got to read the article, because of the finagling <coughs> done in the Senate, the burden has been replaced, has been reversed, so that now, if you want to stop President Obama, you, you got to find 67 senators who are opposed to him. <coughs> Ridiculous. <clears throat> i got to get a drink of water. <clears throat> much, much larger burden. So essentially, what, what, what the Senate did was, instead of having a much easier time of having to ratify the nuclear deal with Iran, they've almost made it impossible to negate whatever Obama Obama's signs. Name. Extremely, extremely, extremely difficult, and and the, uh, the 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 payoff, the bottom line, argued by Andy McCarthy, is that there's no reason to do this. You had the United States Constitution. You're forsaking that document that provides the mechanisms necessary to hold a president accountable. Right. But he argued historically, the the same Republican Congress did the same thing with allowing the debt limit to be increased by President Obama, and then putting a resolution together saying, oh, we're opposed to that, though, though by failing to hold them accountable, they supported it because they wanted more money out there for their own particular projects. This is why so many people more are the Washington Party. business as usual yep, that screws so the average the taxpayer, Party. screws the average American, <clears throat> and makes good for the politicians and the uh, people feeding them the money. And, and plus, they yeah. just don't want the negative press. They, they don't want the negative press. Exactly. They don't want the negative press. It's just feckless leadership is all it is. It really know? is. All right, we got a couple other issues on today's show that we may or may not be able to get to here. Um, the, you're, you're seeing a breaking over the weekend, the beheading of the Christians in Libya. This is a monthly process now by the Islamic State. And this 29-minute video, we'll show you some of it tomorrow. 29-minute video came out, um, highly produced again, use of green screen and animation, all kinds of different things. I mean, these guys are pretty good. Uh, and there's one section in there. And it's, it's an argument in Arabic for the most part. An argument against um, Christian involvement and, and uh, Christian participation in the Middle East. They want to wipe, they, the Islamic State, the Salafist Muslims, want to wipe the Middle East clean of Christians. Now, <clears throat> now, here's just a simple question for everybody out there listening and watching. We all look back at uh, the Middle Ages and go, how could the Crusades have ever occurred? My word, they were so violent and so vicious. And, you know, the, the soldiers with crosses and riding from Rome and all of that. What do you think is taking place today? The, the communication back in 1100, 1099 was when the first crusade started, wasn't as, uh, as swift as it is. But there was communication. And the Christians in Rome and other parts of the, the empire, the, the known world, heard that Christians were being slaughtered by Muslims in Jerusalem and, and on and on and on. And, and finally, somebody said, why don't we stop them? <laughs> I mean, what are we going to do? And you hear calls worldwide. We've got to stop this Islamic State. We've got to do something about it. And the Islamic State is saying, we want the Crusaders to come and get us. When you look at the medieval crusade, you're looking at simply, now, did it go off the rails at certain points? Certainly. But the intent was to stop Muslims from killing Christians. That was the intent of this whole thing in the Middle Ages. And it, it, it did some very bad things, but that was the intent. I tell you right now, if there's a response of people worldwide to stop the Islamic State, uh, there's also going to be slaughter and bloodshed all over the place, and a lot of innocent people are going to die 
But that's for another day. We'll talk about it. We'll delineate the Crusades, where they were good, where they were bad, where they were helpful, where they were harmful. And we'll discuss whether or not there should be a modern day crusade against the Islamic State by free people everywhere. That's for another day. So is the headline Trento calls for crusade? Calls for crusade. <laughs> uh, I'm using their term in Dabic crusade. Yep. I'll tell you why that could be a good term or a bad term. Stay tuned.